Hello, YouTubers. We are deciding to put quite possibly the most exciting book we're reading this year, The Outsiders, here on YouTube. I hope you're as excited as I am. We're going to get right into chapter one here and read as much as possible to uh, see how far we get here. Chapter one, The Outsiders. When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things in my mind, Paul Newman and a ride home. I was wishing I looked like Paul Newman. He looks tough and I don't. But I guess my own looks aren't so bad. I have light brown, almost red hair and greenish gray eyes. I wish there were more gray because I hate most guys that have green eyes, but I have to be content with what I have. My hair is longer than a lot of the boys where they're squared off on the back, long in the front and the sides. But I'm a greaser, and most in my neighborhood rarely bothers to get a haircut. Besides, I look better with long hair. I had a long walk home and no company, but I usually loan it anyway for no reason except that I like to watch movies undisturbed so I can get into them and live them with the actors. When I see a movie with someone, it's kind of uncomfortable, like having someone read a book over your shoulder. I'm different that way. I mean, my second oldest brother, Soda, who's 16 going on 17, never cracks a book at all. And my oldest brother, Daryl, who we call Derry, works too long and hard to be interested in a story or drawing a picture. So I'm not like them. And nobody in our gang digs movies and books the way I do. For a while there, I thought I was the only person in the world that did. So I loaned it. Soda tries to understand at least, which is more than Derry does. But then, Soda's different from anybody. He understands everything, almost. Like he's never howling at me all the time the way Derry is, or treating me as if I was six instead of fourteen. I love Soda more than I've ever loved anyone, even mom and dad. He always happy go lucky, grinning, while Derry's hard and firm and rarely grins at all. But then, Derry's gone through a lot in his twenty years, grown up too fast. Soda Pop will never grow up at all. I don't know which way is best. I'll find out one of these days. Anyway, went on walking home thinking about the movie and suddenly wishing I had some company. Greasers can't walk alone too much or they'll get jumped. Or somebody will come by and scream, Greaser! at them, which doesn't make you feel too hot if you know what I mean. We get jumped by the socials. I'm not sure it's how you spell it, but it's the abbreviation for the socials, the jet set, the West Side Witch Kids. I like the term Greaser, which is used to class all us boys from the East Side. We're poorer than the socials and middle class. I reckon we're wilder too. Not like the socials who jump greasers and wreck houses and blow, throw beer blasts for kicks and get editorials in the paper for being a public disgrace one day and an asset to society the next. Greasers are almost like hoods. We steal things and drive old souped up cars and hold up gas stations, have a gang fight once in a while. I don't mean I do things like that. Derry would kill me if I got into trouble with the police. Since mom and dad were killed in an auto wreck, the three of us get to stay together only as long as we behave. So, Soto and I stay out of as much trouble as we can, and we're careful not to get caught when we can't. I only mean that most greasers do things like that, just like we wear our hair long and dress in blue jeans and t-shirts and leave our shirt tails out and wear leather jackets or tennis shoes or boots. I'm not saying either socials or greases are better, that's just the way things are. I could have waited to go to the movies until Darius Soda Pop got off work. They would have gone with me or driven me there or walked along. Although Soda just can't sit still long enough to enjoy a movie. And they bore Derry to death. Derry thinks his life is enough without inspecting other people's. Or I could have gotten one of the gang to come along. One of the four boys Derry and Soda and I have grown up with and considered family. We're almost as close as brothers. When you grow up in a tight-knit neighborhood like ours, you get to know each other real well. If I'd thought about it, I would have called Derry and he would have come by on his way home and picked me up. Or 2-Bit Matthews, one of our gang, would have come and get me in his car if I'd asked him. But sometimes, I just don't use my head. Drives my brother Derry nuts when I do stuff like that. Because I'm supposed to be smart. I make good grades, have a high IQ and everything. But I don't use my head. Besides, I like walking. Well, I about decided I didn't like it so much, though, when I spotted that red Corvair trailing me. It was almost two blocks from home then, so I started walking a little faster. I'd never been jumped, but I'd seen Johnny after four socials got a hold of him, and it wasn't pretty. Johnny was scared of his own shadow after that. Johnny was 16 then. 
I knew it wasn't any use, though, the fast walking, I mean. Even before the Cor Corvair pulled up beside me and five socias got out, I got pretty scared. Kind of small for 14, even though I have a good build, and those guys were bigger than me. I automatically hitched my thumbs in my jeans and slouched. Wonder if I could get away for way if I made a break for it. I remembered Johnny, his face all cut up and bruised. And I remembered how he'd cried when we found him half conscious in the corner lot. Johnny had it awful rough at home. Took a lot to make him cry. I was sweating something fierce, although I was cold. I could feel my palms getting clammy and the perspiration running down my back. I get like that when I'm real scared. I glanced around for a pop bottle or a stick or something. Steve Randall, Soda's best buddy, had once held off four guys with a busted pop bottle. But there was nothing. So I stood there like a bump on the log while they surrounded me. I don't use my head. They walked around, slowly, silently smiling. Hey, Grease, one of them said in an overly friendly voice. We're going to do you a favor, Greaser. We're going to cut all that long, greasy hair off. He had on a madras shirt. I can still see it. Blue madras. One of them laughed and cussed me out in a low voice. I couldn't think of anything to say. There just isn't a whole lot you can say while waiting to get mugged, so I kept my mouth shut. Need a haircut, greaser? The medium-sized blonde pulled a knife from his back pocket and flipped the blade open. I finally thought of something to say. No. I was backing up away from that knife. Of course, I backed right into one of them. They had me down in a second. Had my arms and legs pinned down, and one of them was sitting on my chest with his knees and my elbows, and if you don't think that hurts, you're crazy. I could smell English leather shaving lotion and stale tobacco. And I wondered foolishly if I'd suffocate before they did anything. I was scared so bad I was wishing I would. I fought to get loose and almost did for a second. Then they tightened up on me and the one on my chest slugged me a couple times. So I lay still, swearing at them between gas. A blade was held against my throat. How'd you like to get that haircut to begin just below the chin? It occurred to me they could kill me. I went wild. I started screaming for soda, dairy, anyone. Someone put his hand over my mouth and I bit it as hard as I could, tasting the blood running through my teeth. I heard a murdered curse and got slugged again. And they were stuffing a handkerchief in my mouth. And one of them kept saying, shut him up for Pete's sake, shut him up. There were shouts and pounding of feet and socias jumped up and left me there, gasping. I was lying there and wondered what in the world was happening. People were jumping over me, running by me, and I was too dazed to figure it out. Then someone had me under the armpits and was hauling me to my feet. It was Derry. Are you all right, pony boy? He was shaking me and I wished he'd stopped. I was dizzy enough all anyway. I could tell it was Derry though, partly because of the voice and partly because Derry is always rough without meaning to be. I'm okay. Quit shaking me, Derry. I'm okay. He stopped instantly. I'm sorry. He wasn't really. Derry isn't ever sorry for anything he does. Seems funny to me that he should look exactly like my father and act exactly opposite from him. My father was only 40 when he died and he looked 25. And a lot of people thought Dad and, Dad and Derry were brother instead of, brothers instead of father and son, but they only looked alike. My father was never rough with anyone without meaning to be. Derry is six foot two, broad shouldered and muscular. He has dark brown hair that kicks out in the front and a slight calic in the back, just like Dad's. But Derry's eyes are his own. He's got eyes that are like two pieces of pale blue green ice. They got a determined set to them, like the rest of them. He looks older than twenty, tough, cool, and smart. He'd be real handsome if his eyes weren't so cold. He doesn't understand anything that's not plain hard fact, but he uses his head. I sat down again, rubbing my cheek where I'd been slugged the most. Derry jammed his fists in his pockets. They didn't hurt you too bad, did they? They did. I was smarting and aching, my chest was sore, and I was so nervous my hands were shaking, and I wanted to start bawling, but you just don't say that to Derry. Mm, I'm okay. Soda Pop came loping back. By then I'd figure out that all the noise I heard was the gang coming to rescue me. He dropped down beside me, examining my head. You got cut up a little, huh, pony boy? I looked at him blankly. I did? He pulled out a handkerchief and wet the end of it with his tongue and pressed it gently against the side of my head. But you're bleeding like a stuck pig. I am? Look. 
He showed me the handkerchief, red as if by magic. They pull a blade in you? I remember the voice. Need a haircut, greaser? The blade must have slipped while he was trying to shut me up. Yeah. Soda is handsomer than anyone else I know. Not like Derry. Soda's movie star kind of handsome. The kind that people stop on the street to watch go by. He's not as tall as Derry, and he's a little slimmer, but he has a finely drawn, sensitive face, but somehow manages to be reckless and thoughtful at the same time. He's got dark old hair that he combs back, long and silky and straight, and in the summer, the sun blinches it to a shining wet gold. His eyes are dark brown, lively, dancely, dancing, recklessly laughing eyes that can be gentle and sympathetic one moment and blazing with anger the next. He has dad's eyes. But so does one of a kind. He can get drunk in a drag race or dance without even getting near alcohol. In our neighborhood, it's rare to find a kid who doesn't drink once in a while, but Soda never touches a drop. He doesn't need to. He gets drunk on just plain living. And he understands everybody. He looked at me more closely. I looked away hurriedly because if you want to know the truth, I was starting to bawl. I knew I was as white as I felt and I was shaking like a leaf. Soda just put his hand on my shoulder. Easy, pony boy. I ain't gonna hurt you no more. I know, I said. But the ground began to blur and I felt hot tears running down my cheeks. I brushed them away impatiently. I'm just a little spooked, that's all. I drew a quivering breath and quit crying. You just don't cry in front of Derry. Not unless you're hurt like Johnny had been that day we find him in the vacant lot. Compared to Johnny? Huh, I wasn't hurt at all. So to rub my hair. You're an okay kid, pony. Had to grin at him. Soda can make you grin no matter what. I guess it's because he's always grinning so much himself. You're crazy, Soda. Out of your mind. Derry looked as if he'd like to knock our heads together. Hey, you're both nuts. Soda merely cocked an eyebrow, a trick he'd picked up from Two-Bit. Same's around this family. Derry stared at him for a second, then cracked a grin. Soda Pop isn't afraid of him, and like everyone else, and enjoys teasing him. I'd just as soon tease a full-blown grizzly, but for some reason, Derry seems to like being teased by Soda. Our gang had chased the socials to their car and heaved rocks at them. They came running toward us now, four lean, hard guys. They are all tough as nails and looked it. I'd grown up with them, and they accepted me, even though I was younger, because I was Derry and Soda's kid brother, and I kept my mouth shut good. Steve Randall was 17, tall and lean, with thick, greasy hair he kept combed in complicated swirls. He was cocky, smart, Soda's best buddy since grade school. Steve's specialty was cars. He could lift a hubcap quicker and more quietly than anyone in the neighborhood, but he also knew cars upside down and backward, and he could drive anything on wheels. He and Soda worked at the same gas station, Steve part-time and Soda full-time. And their gas station got more customers than any other in town. Now, whether that was because Steve was so Steve, Steve was so good with cars, or because Soda attracted girls like honey draws flies, I couldn't tell you. I liked Steve only because he was Soda's best friend. He didn't like me. He thought I was a tag along and a kid. Soda always took me with him when they went places if they weren't taking girls, and that bugged Steve. It wasn't my fault. Soda always asked me. I didn't ask him. Soda doesn't think I'm a kid. Two-Bit Matthews was the oldest of the gang and the wisecracker of the bunch. He's about six feet tall, stocky and built and very proud of his long, rusty-colored sideburns. He had gray eyes and a wide grin. And he couldn't stop making funny remarks to save his life. You couldn't shut up that guy. He always had to get his two bits worth in. Hence his name. Even his teachers forgot his real name was Keith and we hardly remembered he had one. Life is one big joke to Two-Bit. He was famous for shoplifting and his black handled switchblade, which he couldn't have acquired without his first talent. And he always was smarting off to the cops. Couldn't really help it. Everything he said was so irresistibly funny that he had just to let the police in on it to brighten up their dull lives. That's the way he explained it to me. He liked fights, blondes, and for some unfathomable reason, school. He was still a junior at 18 and a half, and he never learned anything. He just went for kicks. I liked him real well because he kept us laughing at ourselves as well as at other things. He reminded me of Will Rogers. Maybe it was the grin.